Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's Alice here. It's the Ramble. And, of course, we go until midnight tonight in the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the west coast of the United States, to San Francisco, California, where people are crapping in the streets. <laughs> it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, and uh, Happy New Year. Thank you very much. I, I'm afraid to go back to San Francisco. Yeah, you'd be, you might be horrified if you came out here. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm told. You know, and I, I, just, I just, San Francisco has so many wonderful memories for me. I mean, I, every now and then my mind wanders back to growing up and living in San Francisco. And, and just, you know, San Francisco... With the fog. The fog is what I always remember the most. You're walking down the street and it's foggy. What a feeling, isn't it? Yeah. You know. And you grew up here. And the most beautiful city in America. No question about it. But not now, I hear. I mean, is it still? Are there people really camped out in the streets? They're camped out mostly down by uh, around uh, not too far from Union Square. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, very few in the marina, but uh, yeah, they're mostly that downtown area. You would have thought they would have settled in the marina because it's a big, long, flowing area of grass. Yeah, the marina green. The marina green, which goes, um, what, a couple of miles or something? It's uh, three-quarters of a mile around the green, and then you've got, uh, then you've got the Yacht Club, and then there's Chrissy Field. And then also you have it going out towards uh, the, the Golden Presi- Gate Bridge. Why aren't they camped out in the Presidio? Yeah, there's none out there. So yeah, well maybe people should direct them there. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yes, yeah, it's a nicer that. place you can live that you can put your your portable hut up. You know, that uh, tenderloin area was always seemed like it was always kind of disgusting. Maybe that's the history of that. So. Have they figured out a way yet to to uh, to solve this problem of the homeless in San Francisco? They keep throwing more money at it, but it just keeps getting worse. So. Because I hear that the reason why you know why 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 did they go to San Francisco? I mean, it's a beautiful city, I have to admit, but why did they go to San Francisco as opposed to any one of a number of cities which are available to them? And the reason is that San Francisco, the prices on uh, Drugs are cheaper than anywhere else in the country. Yeah, the drugs, and you get free needles. And yeah, well, you get it. You get a needle with every drug package. <laughs> right? yeah. it's, a, it's a bonus. Well, city, will, city will supply you with needles, and uh, yeah. Well, you know they're sending they're sending migrants here, mm-hmm. and the migrants. Uh, the reason one of the reasons they're sending them here is we have a thing called. A, uh, a humanitarian law of one sort or another where we have to give people at least 30 days lodging somewhere if they're homeless and come to New York City. Um, it was met as a humanitarian thing and, uh, you know, not, the, not, the, not an evil idea, certainly, but it's come back to haunt us. And... Um, that's the reason why they're sending them here, is because by law we cannot say you can't stay here. We have to find you a place and lodge you. Yeah, I saw in the news that they they're putting people up in schools where you are. And- oh, they're putting them up everywhere. You know, uh, I think they asked if they could use my apartment. You know, <laughs> I mean, it, 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 you've but- got room. <laughs> The, it, well, isn't it cold back there right now? Yeah, but the problem is, I think there's an exception to that law, though, that if, if you do something that forces somebody into this situation and we have to take care of them, then you have to pay a fine. So, I mean, there are things I think we could do against the governor of uh, Texas, uh, Abbott, um, 
guy in a wheelchair. I think somebody should dr- roll him into traffic. Um, he, uh, horrible person. I mean, can you imagine? Okay, let's say you wind up in life in a wheelchair. Okay, which is always possible. You're just one car accident away from being in a wheelchair, and you're you're in a wheelchair. Are you going to be a mean, nasty, vile human being like Governor Abbott is? I think his first name is Bud, isn't it? Uh, 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 but Governor Abbott, he he's just this horrible human being, but he's in a wheelchair. He should have sympathy for people. Well, I think well, I think his state's being overrun too. So I don't know. Well, it, 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 there are parts of it, yeah, that are being overrun. Uh, I don't know how you solve that part problem at the border. I think, you know, you could say we're just not letting anybody in. Period. Well, that's what they said they should do. I think they should. You can't. Yeah. I mean, they said, like, they said uh, a billion people around the world would come here if they could. But let me put it this way. What's the humanitarian answer here? You know? I think that's a uh, important thing to think about what uh, you know I mean what is the humanitarian answer do we just simply prevent them from coming into the country here they are they're coming across the Rio Grande with their kids and their families I mean most of these people are not drug dealers you know working as you know mules for drugs most of these people are families with their kids, I see them getting off the buses on television here, and they're carrying babies. You know, I mean, they they had to get out of where they were because life was just too terrible for them. Uh, and so I, you know, I I I feel for these people. But on the other hand, do you turn them away then once they they've walked all the way from Guatemala, let's say? And they finally wind up at our border. Do you turn them away? And where do they go when you turn them away? You know, so it's a, it's a real dicey question. If you're a decent human being, yeah, it's a very that's, that's, easy that's, answer. If you're a lousy human being, <laughs> you know, and you're a decent human being, I'm a decent human being, and and uh, it's it's terrible. It's just terrible. So anyway. You know, I, I don't. I, one of the things they could do, I was told, that they'd be try to uh, make the countries uh, maybe in a little better condition that they're trying to flee. So maybe give some aid to those countries. And well, but you know, you give aid to those countries, and a lot of times they're run by co- very corrupt regimes but, who will yeah, then well, take, take that money and, out. Yeah, they but they will take that money and use it for other stuff. Right. You know, like buying wax lips and candy. <laughs> I mean, but, but, you know, you give them money and they're not going to put it towards that. You know, there's something terrible going on in those countries is making people flee the countries. Nobody wants to leave home, do they? I don't think so. I don't think anybody does that because they want want to. Excuse me, I'm belching here. Um, the, because they want to. They do it because they're they fear for their families' lives, all right, and want a better life for their families. So, what a better place to come <clears throat> than the United States? Although I think there are better places than the United States right now. Uh, might I suggest Gaza? Anyway, God. Um, <laughs> Jesus. I wonder if there's anybody actually trying to get into Gaza. <laughs> you know, I mean. Oh, man. Probably the rent's very low right now. Yeah, oh, believe me. I mean, it's just, it, uh, there's just terrible things going on in the world, and they're all humanitarian problems. They're not things that we, um, uh, you know, uh, they're humanitarian problems, and some of them inflicted. You know, they say that, for instance, Biden is going to have a hard time getting votes from younger voters because of the way he's handling the Gaza situation. Yeah, I read that's uh, splintering the Democratic Party right now. Yeah, yeah. And I'm part of that splinter. I mean, I I know I've got to vote for him. I can't vote for, you know, 
the orange orangutan. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, it's a question of whether you're going to uh, whether you, you know, whether you, you got to vote for Biden, I guess. But I don't want to. I would prefer it were somebody else, somebody I could really get behind. But uh, it's not the case. So I and, keep hearing he's going to drop out, but I don't know. I, I can't see that happening. Doesn't seem like he wants to. Well, I mean, if he drops out, then the Democrats have a real problem. Because, uh, you know, we've set up this primary system, which is just bullshit. There's nothing in the Constitution that says you have to have a primary. In fact, there was a time when we didn't have primaries. Well, you ask, ask me what we did. What did we do before the primaries, Alex? Well, we actually held conventions, and that's where they argued who was going to be the nominee. That's when the, yeah, the, that's when the smoke... Then that where the smoke filled room came from. That's where, where the caucuses make... and the you know all of that uh, comes from, and and that they were decided at the conventions. Many times, there were ten, fifteen votes before they got themselves a nominee. Yeah, you know, people didn't do well on the first vote, so they were out of it. And there were like maybe fifteen people. That's where you do it. The, doing primaries is simply helping out the, the the parties to determine who their nominee is going to be. And that shouldn't be our job. Not when it costs us millions of dollars to hold the election. Yeah, and it, it's good for the networks because they beat this shit for three years about, oh, who's going to win Iowa or New Hampshire or some small state yeah. that doesn't matter. You know? I mean, we should probably do away with primaries, make them illegal, say they are not in the Constitution, therefore they should not be used as a method of deciding who the nominee is going to be, and that if, in fact, you want to hold one in a particular state, you have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, why, why are we doing your job? Why are we doing your job when you should be going to a convention, yelling and screaming at each other, paying each other off or doing whatever you used to do at those conventions, coming up with a nominee, and then... There's like a three-month period between the conventions and the election, and that's when they go out on the stump and try and get votes and things like that. That would just just clean up the whole process. But here, two years before there's even a the first uh, 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 you know uh, primary, yeah, they're the taking polls in Iowa the, two years before exactly. Right? They're saying, who, who's going to win? Yeah, two years ahead of time. That's ridiculous. To begin with, it hurts the country because the president of the United States at the time should be able to concentrate on being president right. and not is, on, yeah. on whether he's going to get reelected or not two years hence. He should have to worry about it three months hence. You know? So, I mean, I just think we should do away with the primaries. And I don't know anybody who's ever given me a good argument why we shouldn't do away with them. I think you're right. Yeah. So, I'm always right. Right, Bubbles? <laughs> I'm always correct. Never knew a day when you worked with me that, you know, that was right. Uh, we haven't had a good primary since JFK. Um a good primary since JFK. I'm trying to think. Was there a primary back for him? You know, oh, yeah. a lot of states didn't do primaries in those days. He got, uh, he actually, he beat Huber Humphrey in West Virginia, which got him over, they didn't think he could, and that got him his campaign really rolling. Well, uh, well right now, uh, uh, we're, we're, today is the day that when we're recording this that they're having the Iowa caucus. Uh, and I've been to uh, went to Iowa during a caucus and saw how it was done. And it's very it's it's a lot of fun, believe it or not. People get to a school or whatever, which is one of the caucusing places, and uh, they uh, they they get there about five in the afternoon, and uh, they uh, sit around. And about six thirty, they're all hustled into like these gymnasiums and whatever. And uh, they have different areas that say, like, here's this candidate, and here's this candidate, and here's this candidate. And then you line up for that candidate. Now, 
People then come over to your line. Let's say you've got the longest line and you're the, you're the Trump line, okay? They get to go over and try and convince you to come over to the uh, you know Nikki Haley line. And it's really fascinating because you really see a kind of democracy in action. But that doesn't mean that the whole Iowa caucus means shit to a tree. Right. It doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. In fact, the winners of the past uh, Iowa caucuses were, let's see, Ted Cruz, uh, Mike Huckabee, uh, and there was one other. And they all Rick, San, Rick Santorum, Rick who no one San, ever heard of. Rick Santorum. None of them wound up being the nominee of the party. So no. what's Iowa? Iowa's nothing. And this this thing is it's gone through the news like it's a Super Bowl for the past eight months, you know. And by the way, I, I enjoyed my days in in Iowa. You know, uh, it was a, a, a terrific little community, and people there were fun and. You know, I mean, but I saw the whole process going on. I think, I think Obama was running in that. You know, there are two caucuses, by the way, folks. There's the Republican caucus and there is the Democratic caucus. Now, we don't care about the Democratic caucus this year because the only guy running in it is, I guess, is Biden. So, so they're not paying attention to that. They're just paying attention to the Republican. And the Republican is slightly different than the Democratic primary uh, caucus. I can't remember how what the difference is, but there is a difference, uh, and uh, it's uh, you know uh, it, it's it's fun to watch. It's a nice little game, but it don't mean shit to a tree. No, you know, uh, it's about one percent of the voters in the country. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's not exactly a vote. You know, it it's a weird kind of construct. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it. I thought it was, I thought it was phenomenally interesting. Mm. You know, but certainly it's not people going to a poll, going to a voting place, and voting for somebody. But I say, do away with the primaries. Let these parties figure out who their candidate is on their own, okay? And not play this this game that's going on right now. I mean, if my wife is glued to MSNBC, and every, oh, God. every five minutes is, what's happening in Iowa? What's happening in Iowa? Oh, well, well, when they go to Michigan, you know, and uh, it really doesn't matter. It, what matters is what goes on beyond this, beyond Iowa. What what goes on in Michigan, uh, rather, um, where is it? Uh, New Hampshire. New Hampshire, which I also went to. That was less interesting. You know, um, but uh, and uh, that was the year Obama was running that year. I remember because Obama, I went to an Obama rally, and he never really showed up in time, so I had to leave because I wanted to go to sleep so I could get up early enough to do my show in the morning. So anyway, so I, but you know, uh, you have New Hampshire, and that that's that's the big one. And they say that Nikki Haley has a good chance of winning that one. So, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, although that was the one that did knock LBJ out. So. It it didn't? It did or it didn't? It did. That's when Eugene McCarthy scored. He didn't win, but he scored close enough that LBJ knew he was done. Knew he was done? Yeah, and then uh, March 31st, 68, he came on and said, I'm not running. I, I don't think that's the reason he decided not to run. I seem to remember it. Okay, I, here's how I remember it. I'm sitting there watching this speech that Lyndon Johnson is giving. I think it's about Vietnam. And I looked over at somebody who was watching it with me and said, I have a funny feeling tonight he's going to say he's not running. I, I don't know where I got that thought or wh where it came from. But that was my thought. And sure enough, that's exactly what he did. He said, I've decided not to run. And that really and threw, the, threw the whole thing to a fairly well because up until that point, he was in the primaries. You know? And we well, were, he'd, lost, he'd almost lost New Hampshire to McCarthy the month before. Yeah. So, so, so and, and you know, that's amazing because it's strange. 
But if you ask me who is the best president in my lifetime, okay, I would say it was Lyndon Johnson. I mean, the stuff he did was phenomenal. He got the most done. He got because you know why he got it done? Because he, he, as being part of the Senate, and as being a, a, a guy who used to be able to go in and railroad people into stuff, he was the guy who knew how to convince the other party to go his way. You know, and it, it, it was, uh, I think he was a great president. He took, oh, they say, well, what about Kennedy? Kennedy didn't get anything done. Kennedy died, and, uh, and uh, Johnson felt it was incumbent upon him to fulfill his legacy. And that's what he did. More civil rights legislation was passed under Lyndon Johnson than any president in history. That's true. And yet this is a guy who thought he was going to lose an election? I guess we never know when we got it good, you know? <laughs> well, things are not going well, though, the year he dropped out. I mean, yeah. was, the war did him in. The war did him in. He... The story goes that Walter Cronkite got on the air one day and just said, you know, um, Lyndon Johnson does not know how to handle this war. And he really wasn't good at it. Uh, my argument about why he wasn't good at it was he was a uh, he was a man of the earth, of the soil. You know, he was an American who grew up in uh, Texas. And he was not a world traveler, so he didn't have the concept of what goes on in the rest of the world. And um, uh, yeah, that was that, that was the biggest problem he had. And so he didn't know how to handle the Vietnam War very well. And that's what I think got him more than anything else, because that started becoming a real issue at the time. And who became president after him? Uh, Nixon. Nixon. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Nixon didn't know what to do either until about the last, uh, well, he never, he, did he ever get around to solving it? No. No. He was, uh, they, Kissinger kept trying to negotiate some peace thing with Hanoi, and then uh, we definitely were getting out of it, but... Uh, it wasn't until Ford came in after Nixon when they uh, remember remember the planes were leaving and the helicopters were leaving Saigon with people hanging on them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then when we came back, we said we won the war. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's how you win a war, by the way, folks, and get it over with early. You just say you won and leave. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, that was that was that whole war was a hellhole. What a waste that was, Jesus. What a waste of human lives. Yeah. What a waste of money. Oh, boy. And then uh, then after that, I think we uh, after Nixon, we got Carter, didn't we? We had Ford. Ford. Well, Ford, yeah, I forgot about The forgettable president. The only, yeah. the only person never elected to the office. Right. He wasn't elected as vice president because he wasn't vice president. He replaced Spiro Agnew when Agnew had to leave. Mm -hmm. And then Nixon left, and he became president. And he never, nobody ever voted for him to be president. You know, great trivia question. And then he lost to Carter. He lost to Carter, and then Carter lost to Reagan. Right. Uh, you know, I, I have a joke, and it goes, you know, if, if, if you think Trump is bad... If you look back at uh, at the Bush, Bush looks a lot better compared to Trump. In fact, really? oh, I think I, I can't stand Bush. But, you can't stand Bush, no. but compared to Trump, well, Trump, to, Trump didn't get us into that fucking war in Iran. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, but anyway, but I, I used to say so. I guess Bush doesn't look as bad, and. Uh, 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 certainly um, Clinton doesn't look as bad and uh, the Bush before him doesn't look as bad in fact Nixon doesn't look as bad in fact Reagan doesn't look as bad Hitler doesn't look as bad yeah. as Trump so anyway but 
Uh, we've been dealing with history on this episode instead of suicide. That's good. That's a step. Yes, that is. That's the, a step. That is funny. Though. The old G- Gerald Ford had a what do you have a year and a half and uh, yeah, thoroughly forget. I'm, I, the most boring president and had two assassination attempts on him. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Right. You're <laughs> right. Like, the yeah. man you'd least likely want to kill. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I stopped in, the, in one month. Y- y- you're right. It was uh, first. It was that uh, member of the Manson family, or it yeah, was, she it, stalked him in Sacramento. Then a couple weeks later, a guy shot him in in Sacramento in San Francisco. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So, yeah, <laughs> he must have had a target on his back or something. I mean, he, all these horrible presents we had. Nothing. Nobody ever tried anything. Uh, yeah. Ford just yeah. They, Ford they, turns into a shooting gallery. <laughs> Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen, we got to go. You know? Yeah. I'll talk to you next time. We will. Bye bye. Now, in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, everybody. How are you? It is, uh, it is uh, Friday. Uh, and it's the last day of the week for us here, which means I don't have anything to do for a couple of days. And, you know, I'm, I'm okay with that, too. Anyway, uh, what is it? Anything I have to report to you? Not really. Not really. We have a couple of people waiting to come on here. I'd like to see a few more ready to go. But, you know, that's as it is. Okay. Uh-huh. Hmm. God, man. Let me see here. I think maybe we should um, maybe we should bring these people in. Okay, admit all. These are just two people: Charlie Wallace and Josh Wheeler. Hello, Josh. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. You're good. I am. Okay. And uh, uh, Charlie, how you doing this evening? I'm doing pretty good. Okay, let's see what that shirt says. Okay. Oh, boy, you're going to have to really explain that one. (laughs) It says, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change. And what's the thing on the bottom? Stephen F. Hawkins. (laughs) That's who said that. (laughs) Oh, boy. Isn't that wonderful? That's great. You come up with the best T-shirts. Notice you have a, uh, a uh, what is cycle back there, right? Yes, yeah, my stationary bike that I exercise on every do day. Do you use that? Oh yeah. How often? Every day, unless I'm umpiring. Every if day. I'm umpiring, I don't have to do it because I run around for four hours. Yeah, so. that's uh, that's good. I I have a stationary bike too. It isn't meant to be. <laughs> that's one of my older jokes. Okay, here we go. Jeff is trying to figure it out now. Is he going to do it? Is he going to do it? Oh, here comes Pamela. Oh, yeah. Okay, is 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 Jeff going to do it? Pamela will probably do it for him. He's in. Okay. Are you there, Pamela? I think so. See, you can hear us, and Jeff can hear us, okay. and there's no sound coming back at us. Look at us. The man did it. Yeah. I just came over to see what was going on. The man did it. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you guys. Thank you, Pamela. We really appreciate it. I didn't do anything. The man did it. Well, well, the man did it himself. Hi there, yes. Jeff. How are you? Trying. Trying. Occasionally. Yeah. Success. Yeah. Well, today is a day that uh, we who hate Trump can relish in. <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah, because uh, he uh, just got a hit with a $83.3 million legal settlement. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, she'll probably never see that money, okay? I mean, they'll be, they'll be, put, they'll be appealing that thing forever. And then when yep. they're through, to, through appealing it. At the time, so it could take months. It, yeah, try and get the money out of them, Okay. He, 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 I don't think he has it, to be honest with you. Oh, let me let me put on our group here. Yeah, okay, you got to see they're there. Okay. Okay, now we got that. Okay. 
So anyway, so uh, uh, it's um, and it, 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 I think it's well a well deserved uh, uh, fine uh, because uh, he made her life miserable, mm. you know, and he can't get away with it. I said, "Oh, look what happened! I froze all of a sudden." You did. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, let me see here. What uh, what do I need to do here? I know what I can do. I can. Sometimes this thing freezes up and then uh, it doesn't. Now let me. There we go. See, now we're okay. Here comes Tom Yamaguchi. Oh boy, this is I think twice this <clears throat> week for Tom, if I'm not mistaken. Oh. Yeah. Uh, here comes Tom. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, no, I, it, 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 as I said, I don't think she's going to oh. see that money. To, she, it's going to be difficult for her to get it. I don't think she's even gotten the first award yet. You know. Nope. Because, uh, huh? I mean, if he has it available and the court can look into that, he'll pay it. The first judgment was $5 million, and he had to turn that money over, and he gave it to the court, and it's held in a receivership, which they currently have it being held waiting the appeal. So that once the appeal process is exhausted, they will then give her the money immediately. Oh, okay. Well, so he paid the first five million. But that's dollars. going to be a while, though, right? Although, uh, I, uh, I mean, it's actually, I mean, it might not be that bad. I mean, it's not going to be like weeks, but, you know, his appeal doesn't have to go through a jury selection and a jury trial and testimony and all that stuff again it's just going to be an appeal to an appeals court and his lawyers can are going to make whatever argument and then they have their few weeks that they're out and then when they come back and you know that's that and then he can try to appeal and i don't know exactly i don't know if I, was was the suit in federal court or state court i don't remember i think it was in federal court well, it, I, so no, if it was I think federal no, court, I, he no. really only will have like I do the district I, court of appeals. I think it was in in uh, in New York City actually. In New York City. I don't City know. Court. I, I thought that it was a federal court suit, but Josh is correct. I can look here in a minute. But either way, like you know, like if it was, I mean, he's basically like got well, the why, level. Why would it have been a federal court suit? <laughs> uh, I'm not really sure exactly what the yeah deal was but you know i mean either way but even if not i mean even if it was a new york state court mm -hmm. i'm sure they have a new york state court of appeals and he can appeal there and then if he loses mm -hmm. he'll have the new york state supreme court but if they don't choose to hear it or, or however their system works i mean they may not even so it may not even go anywhere except mm -hmm. one appeal and then federal or state no matter which one it's in kind of the same model you know mm -hmm. I mean, it might not be that, you know, long. All I, mean, I know is that when we had our case, no. uh, the uh, landlord went and appealed it. And I think the appeal only took a couple mm -hmm. of months, if, if that, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying is that, I mean, it, it, it like I said, it's not, I don't think it's going to be like, you know, next week or anything, of course. But, I mean, June, July, August, you know, it's possible that it's been heard, the appeal, and they come out and they say, whoop, that's it. And then he may have the option to appeal to either the state Supreme Court or the U.S. Supreme Court, depending on where it was. But I don't think, you know, the New York State Supreme Court is bound to have to take it. I know the U.S. Supreme Court isn't. So, I mean, then if those entities say, nope, then it's, it's done, you know. Well, so, I mean, if he shows up at the Supreme Court. Like I said, the first $5 million was paid, and if he doesn't have the other 83, he's going to have a problem. So, so he's yeah. going to have to put the the um, the eighty three point three thousand a million rather uh, in in escrow or whatever right probably yes wow that would be my guess that's what happened with the first uh, five million or you know whatever they and you know where he's going to get that money don't you what's that you know where he's going to get that money from don't you. I'll probably take it out of his campaign fund. That's whatever. exactly what I was going to say. Which is also illegal, and then he'll fight some court case about that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, so... I mean, I am so tired of hearing E. Jean Carroll because I can't stand people who have to use 14 names for their name that 
<laughs> I had eighty-three million dollars, so that I didn't have to hear it anymore. I'd probably just go ahead and send it to her, but <laughs> I don't happen to have any money, so I, mean, yeah. I could probably give her like fifty bucks or something. But yeah, I don't yeah. really want to give her that much more. I was looking that. forward to it being called the E. Jean Carroll Tower in New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I don't know what the deal is with the whole name thing. I never. You know, G. Mm -hmm. Gordon Liddy. Like, what the fuck is your name? Oh, I never, I, I never uh, trusted people who did that. It, I know, never trusted whatever. people who did that. Uh, I had a boss right. here in New York City called R. Peter Strauss. Right. I mean, you know, just, you know, what the yeah. fuck is your name? Just pick a name and go with it. You know, like, <laughs> you know, some people don't like their F first. Are you like? Are you like L. Alex Bennett? Or I mean, I, don't, I mean, you know. no, A. 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 Gordon Schwarzman. How's that? Or B. Gordon Schwarzman. I don't there know what we your go. Name is, you know, B. Gordon I mean, Schwarzman. Man. That's my new name. B. Gordon Schwarzman. Yeah. So any way you yeah. cut it, it's a pretty unwieldy name, you know. Yeah. So. I mean, I mean, if I were like Jeff Bezos, I would probably be like, I tell you what, if the media will never say her name again, so I don't have to hear that. I will give her the eighty-three million dollars. <laughs> Out of your own pocket. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, just here's your money. Yeah. <laughs> now go away. Make a name. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the woman claims she got raped. Well, I mean, I was going to say, unless speaking, she was found in a court of law to have been raped. Yeah. Not criminal but, but it was law, in it was but... in a civil it was in a civil case, though. It wasn't Correct. a right. That's a what I said. Not case. criminal law, but yeah, you know. But in the first ruling, the judge overseeing the case, my understanding was read from the dictionary mm -hmm. the definition of rape legally, or maybe it wasn't the dictionary. Maybe it was a New York State statute. I'm sorry. Yeah, and said that the actions described in the event mm -hmm. and have been found you know, as believable by the jury constitute what New York state law supports as under its definition as rape. So, you know, they made a point of that in the first case. And then, you know, in this case he cried because he didn't get to relitigate the first case, but the judge was correct in saying, you're not here to litigate the first case. You've already been found liable for having made these statements and these defamatory acts, you were only here now to discuss whether or not you did them in furtherance of the first case by defying the order to no longer do so and, you know, cease and desist and pay the money. And he didn't do that. So, yeah, I mean, you know, he probably run his mouth some more, I'm sure. But, you know, and whatever, you know, he's not going to be able to get out of the money after a while, I mean, there's no one who can pardon you off of money or anything like that. I mean, uh, so a lawsuit, so. Yep. You know. Yep. I, I don't, it's well, not I mean, that this is the, it, next week. Oh, go ahead. The, this is, this is a case of uh, saying to Trump, just f shut the fuck up. Yeah, right. Because what happened is this case was based on what he said after that other case all right, yeah. was finished. Mm -hmm. And he got on uh, the media and said all mm -hmm. kinds of horrible things about this woman. Mm -hmm. And it was terrible. It was He's terrible. The, war, the funniest yeah. part about it is, though, he claims he doesn't know who she is. Well, right. He keeps saying he's never met her. He, he says he, she's well, not. And then he said, she's not my kind of woman. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, again, what, what's just, his kind of woman? A woman automatically comes with her legs spread. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, but anyway, he said, I, I, she's not my type of woman. And then they asked him to identify the people in a picture they held up. And he pointed to E. Jean Carroll and said, oh, that's my first wife, Marla, my second wife, Marla. Right. <laughs> Yeah, well, well I mean, apparently that woman in the picture appealed to him. I mean, as recently as yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, I mean, he still at least once a week goes on and on and on in a rally about how he's running against Barack Obama. Yeah. 
he still gets confused about that on a regular basis. I mean, and I, like, it's not a misspeak the first time, you know, maybe the first time, or, I don't know, maybe even a second time, or, you know, I mean, it, it's not like a politician who was jet-setting in a campaign all over the country and accidentally said, I'm so, you know, thrilled to be here in Omaha, and they were really in, you know, Cleveland. You know, well, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I mean, he uh, said yeah. that he's running against Obama. I'll, like, I'll tell you who I'm, dis times. who I'm disappointed in is Nikki Haley. Because they got into this fight about competency and taking a competency test, and she hmm. has not challenged him. He said, I, you know, I, I could beat you in a, con a, a com competency test, and because I've already done it. He took some kind of stupid test. I don't know what it was. It wasn't anything that meant anything. Sure uh, but uh, sh she should challenge him to do it publicly. To do it on a public forum. Let's take that test. We'll sit down, both of us. We'll take the test, and then they'll. Uh, she, be... she has now. Huh? She has now. She, yeah, she has now. Oh, has she yeah. said? Oh let's, yes. Let's do it. Yeah. Yes, I heard her say that. I yes. Bet, I bet it's because Jimmy Kimmel kept saying for the last three nights in a <laughs> row, "Nikki Haley, do it, do it, do it." So well, what did she do? Come yeah. out today and say she would want to do it? You know. She uh. Look, she she don't kick sideways. <laughs> she is now. <laughs> yeah. She is now. She's really, really getting on Trump. Well, she should. Yeah. You know, I mean. Uh, she should have done it before. Here, here's before. what I hate. See, all these people he goes after, you know, Ron de Sanctimonious, you know, and uh, he went after Ted Cruz about eight years ago saying his father, in fact, was in the plot to kill Kennedy, I think it was, and uh, said some horrible things about his wife, mm -hmm. all right? And then they decide to back out of the race, and they back Trump. Yeah. What is that? Ron Sanctimonious, the minute he was no longer running, immediately said what a wonderful person Donald <laughs> Trump was. Give me a goddamn break. Yeah, I mean... Mm -hmm. I mean, an endorsement in a, in a way would sort of be one thing, but you know. <laughs> yeah, and plus, Ron the sanctimonious. The other day on stage next to him with telling him, you know, it's just, oh no, it's, it's just how much I love you. I mean, it's like, oh man, you, you're a sad person, dude. Yeah. I mean, like, are you really that? Low well, I think immediately, as soon as they're not running for president anymore, they figure they might get some place in the administration. And that's what they're now auditioning for. I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, it's just, you know, he's just, you know, he's just telling, you know, Tim Scott, oh, you you must you must really hate her, you know, talking about Nikki Haley. He's like, no, 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 I just love you. I mean, it's like, <laughs> oh, please do not embarrass yourself any further than you already have. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. But it's, uh, it's crazy. It's crazy, you know. It's, I mean, but he, he, that's embarrassing for him. Like, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I mean, well, I keep saying I this, and and I, I, I would ask Tom this. Is I say this all the time. <laughs> Do you think that in your lifetime you've ever seen anything like this, or even approaching this? No, nope. no, I haven't. I mean, we've seen some bad people yeah. running for president, but nothing yeah. like this. Yeah, and to have the support he has yeah. is what just. Yeah. They they think they think that the years between 2017 and and 2021 were just all so wonderful. I mean, the economy is just great. Yeah. <laughs> until the, until the pandemic came it all crashing down. It's just it's like saying, mm -hmm. "Well, that was a really lovely vase until you smashed it onto the ground, but I tell there was a very nice, expensive vase." No, but you know? nobody meant, you know, I think the trouble with with uh with uh uh, Biden is he's not bragging. He is now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, he's. Oh, yes. It's. Yes, I, I he think is. He should have been bragging all along. You know, he yeah. should have been peddling what was only a half truth and saying the economy's better than it really is. You know, but now oh, it's very oh. hard for him because people say, "Well, you know, I go to the grocery store and the food is still expensive," and I mm -hmm. go, "You know, blame the people who are selling you the food. They're the ones that." Ch put, put yeah. the prices there you know well, i mean uh so i think i don't know one it was this weekend 
I sent Patrick and, and Kevin a screenshot of my my one year personal rate of return for my personal 401k was twenty five point seven percent, and for my pension that SW pays for me the rate of return in that account was twenty five point two percent. Twenty five. So uh, the one year rate of return. I mean, I have proof. So I'm like, you know. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> so the the economy is pretty good, right? I mean. Yeah. So, what? I mean, what's the problem here? You know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Well, it's, I think half the people who uh, you know, are Trump supporters don't have jobs, well, so they right. don't get I mean, those. It's possible, but I mean, I'm just—it's just like if it was, you know, shitty, whatever. But it's not. I mean, well, the big lie I'm not is even like that, saying, "Oh, uh, Biden it, did that," but I'm just saying that's what it was. There's—I don't see a problem here. You well, know? It, it, give me. It, tell me, I'm wrong if I am. But I don't think the president can do anything about the price of beef. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, it's whatever it's, these gougers want to charge you for that piece of meat. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean, they have tools available to them, and the, you know, they certainly are one of the biggest policy influencers in our nation. And they have the ability to, you know, propose laws and things like that. But I mean, you're right. I mean, it's not as if he can get up every day and decide what the prices are going to be and things like that. I mean, you know, they're, they're an overall large contributor to our economic policy. So they certainly have a large hand in our success or failure, but mm -hmm. it's not like on a day-to-day -day basis. It takes months and years for policies to work things out and stuff like that. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's, that's what the point is. I mean, you had to have, you know, Larry Kudlow or whatever on Fox News last night saying, you know, oh, yeah, I guess I was wrong when I predicted Biden would crash the economy. Yeah, yeah, he's right. You know, <laughs> he admitted that the cut GDP growth is blowing it out of the water. I was wrong. He should be bragging about it. I mean, you know, Biden <clears> boom <throat> is what he said, right? Biden boom. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that was, that was the bar. That was but, you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, I mentioned it a moment ago, is that if the people at home don't feel it when they go to the grocery store, they think the economy is terrible. You know, when they're paying more for their beef than they were paying a year ago, they feel that that's Biden's fault. But it's not. He can't we can't do anything yeah. about that. What he can do is try and get the GDP up and uh, uh, try and, you know, get all the, uh, you know, what? It It's up and unemployment is down. Yeah. yeah. And, and like I said, in, in the last week, I paid less than $3 a gallon for gas. And my personal rate of return on my market 401k was 25%. I mean... I don't see a reason that I need to freak out and vote for a bunch of fascists. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I mean, what's well, there's the a good reason to vote for fascists because they'll, they'll bring back uh, rounding up the Jews. You know, I mean, <laughs> oh boy, you know, it, it's, it, ama it's amazing what people are putting up with, okay, <laughs> and accepting as being the norm and, you know, what should be. The idea of Trump being president again, look, I, if you were for Ted Cruz, I wouldn't be berating you as much as being for Trump. I mean, this is a guy that went to court and was proved to be a rapist, okay? Is that, are those Christian values? How do the evangelicals in Iowa vote for a guy like that? Three Supreme Court justices. Well, you know, yeah. you can go do that all you want to. But still, I mean, he doesn't live by Christian values. I'm sorry. Does it matter? Not He's that I, as a Jew, know what Christian values are, but I assume they have a certain element of love thy neighbor. Okay? Yeah. Well. It isn't grabbing him by the pussy. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But uh, hi, 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 Kevin. Uh, uh, oh, hi, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, the th it, it was just, it's just amazing uh, what, what these people are voting for and mm -hmm. accepting when really there are other choices, okay, of people who will do the same kind of work you want Trump to do, you know, uh, stand up for Christian values and so on and so forth, all that bullshit. 
Um, but uh, they're not voting for them. You know, what, what? what's wrong with Nikki Haley? You know, I mean, I can give you a lot of things that are wrong about Nikki Haley, but that's because I'm a Democrat and because I'm a lefty and because I don't like her for, for her politics. But if you're one of those people who is a Republican, you should be very happy with a Nikki Haley. She has the best chance of beating Biden, I'll tell you that right now. The polls, yeah. Mainly because she's younger, period. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, she has the experience. You know. Yes, governor. Yeah, governor, and she, you know, she went. She was the uh, what the secretary went to the uh, UN ambassador. Uh, UN ambassador, and uh, she's, uh, you know, she's, she's competent enough. I just don't like her politics. I just think her politics suck. But even saying that, if she became president, I think I could live with her for four years. It wouldn't be a threat to democracy. That's, right. that's, that's right. That's the main. Well, that's, that's the one thing. You know, I mean, Trump. Does Trump care about democracy? I mean, does he even know what democracy he is? Want democracy. He wants to be a king. Yeah. He wants to be like Putin and Kim Jong Un. Yeah. Well, how well, how does he think that in this system? And tell me if are are there holes in the system, uh, Josh? Because you're good at this. Are there holes in the system that would allow him? to kind of vacate the democracy? No, I mean, it, there's no, nothing legal, no. I mean, he has congressional no. support, which he has to get a lot <laughs> of. Would, I mean, you can't serve more than two terms per constitutional amendment, so well, suppose you'd have he, to so, undo the constitutional suppose amendment. Suppose while I mean, he's in is, office, he asks for okay. them to change that. Yeah, that's why he's got to get more people behind him right. to try and get that. But that's good. That's, I mean, that's a big ask. You know, it's incredibly, well, I mean, the problem is just Congress can't do that for him. You know, that takes two thirds of both houses and three quarters of the right. states to ratify it in their state legislatures. So that would be, you know, yeah, probably very, I mean, but it just, it just, it just, just a pale. I, I I don't understand any of it. I don't understand how uh, a, 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 you know a Republican can say this is the guy for me when they do have an alternative choice that in fact has a better chance of winning the election than he does. Right. I mean, they've made it about um, um, because it's not they don't have any like policy uh, connection to their platform anymore. It's yeah. basically just revolves around the personal. In this case, the yeah, person. We want Trump. That's all. I mean, they're just emotionally <laughs> attached to a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people are saying it. They're probably getting tired of it, but I don't really know how else best to describe it. Almost like a cult where you're, you're beholden to the leader and not necessarily the doctrine, but you make it sound like you're adhering to doctrine because that's what the leader says, mm -hmm. you know. So then you spread that doctrine as your gospel, even though it doesn't align with, you know, the the doctrine of what you're really coming from. But in particular case, it happens to be a lot of people, and it's more about it's way more about that, you wow. know, than it is about policy. Yeah. I mean, you have several Republicans talking about how if you're not in line with that, oh. they want to eradicate you from well, the, the. No, party. no, this yeah. was the thing that uh, Trump wrote a, 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 what do you call it, a thing on his Truth Social. Truth Post or whatever yeah, you call it. Saying that if you send money to Nikki Haley, you are no longer a member of MAGA. Mm -hmm. And I'm going. Uh, I'm sorry. Camp. Where's the membership card? You know. Well, how, how does he stop? Oh, I get I get offers for a membership card all the time. He sends me emails. Says, "Here's your gold membership card and the Make America Great Again movement and the President's Trust." Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're just they're yeah. But how can you? How can up. he kick you out of MAGA? Is there? Are there meetings? I mean, are there? <laughs> You know, I mean, can't do anything. I mean, we don't. If they want to eradicate those people from their party, 
that's fine. I just uh, go ahead and in the process, feel free by all means to alienate them so that they vote. Don't either don't vote or don't vote for him. Well, he put because out that. A he bunch put of reg registered Republicans don't vote. Not voting, not going and voting for Trump when you normally would have voted for the Republican nominee. To me, mm -hmm. a no vote, a not voting for Trump is almost like a vote for Biden. I, I mean, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to alienate those people in the mm -hmm. process so they just say, fuck it, we're not voting, that's fine. Go right ahead. I mean, yeah. I mean, they if, if, he's that, if he's that stupid. What were you saying? Uh, Many of them already are. And, and I, if, if you, I like to get back to something that you and Larry Brown were talking about, and that was the '68, um, uh, you know, election, you know, the primaries. Mm -hmm. And and Brown was right. I mean, the reason why Lyndon Johnson decided he wasn't going to run was because Eugene McCarthy came real close to beating him in, in New Hampshire, and. Lyndon Johnson wasn't really on the ballot, just just like Biden was on his ballot, but. You know, being the incumbent, he should have had a huge amount of votes. And and then when when Robert Kennedy saw how vulnerable he was, he jumped in. And that was the key right there. Robert Kennedy jumped into the race and Lyndon Johnson knew it was all over. And so he he said, I'm out of here. Well, I heard so, I seem to remember more particularly that he was watching TV one night. And Walter Cronkite said something negative about him. Well, and you know, no, I mean, well, well, Cronkite. Cron I'm trying to. I don't remember. I, I think he was. But that really happened. I think that might have even been the, the previous year. Well, but what he but said like was, if came I, back and, and said that uh, after a visit to Vietnam, as he thought that the, the war was unwinnable, we should get out. I don't think that no, was a no, really but, but he, but the supposedly. Uh, Lyndon Johnson, and I seem to remember this, to somebody or to a group of people said, if I've lost Walter Cronkite, I've lost the people. Yeah. But I think that it, it was, yeah, that was, you know, that might have been a factor, but but I think the, the, the his his, uh, his uh, loss of the, uh, or his, you know, vulnerability in, in, in the primaries was the key, which makes me want to talk about, about Trump. I mean, when you look at 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 the percentage of his of his uh, wins in New Hampshire and, and Iowa, they're not very big at all. A lot of people came out of the poll. The exit poll say, "I voted for for Haley because I just didn't want Trump. I I, I I I thought that I liked Haley. It's just I hate Trump, yeah. you know. So so I'm feeling really very confident at the moment, you know. I'm not saying that I'm not going to work." As hard as I can to to really like Biden and Harris, but but I'm not as what I'm, not what pessimist. I'm not as pessimistic not pessimistic as I was late last year. I mean, you mean about him being able to win the election? About Biden, yes, yeah. because I think finally the the House of Cards is coming down on on Trump. Well, he seems to be he seems doddering. Okay, let me say this: don't don't he is yeah <laughs> see he is doddering. But I found in the last couple of weeks, when he's been campaigning, he's not doddering. He's lucid as hell. So Trump? maybe, maybe this is something that uh, there's some Trump? deep. You, he's no, not Trump. About Biden. I'm talking about Biden. Oh, Biden. No, yeah. oh, Biden's always been lucid. Well, about well, no. but he does, he 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 looks. The eyes are closed shut, and he's you know he he fumfers around because he's got that uh, that uh, stutter. And uh, he just does not seem to be with it, okay? But now that he's running, am I wrong? Am I imagining this? He suddenly seems to be far more lucid than he's been in the yeah, last four years as president. Yeah. You know, he has a sort of a folksy style. That's folksy? You know? Yeah, folksy. <laughs> but Biden, he has sort of a folksy style. Uh, you know, but at the same time, when he, when he wants to give a serious speech, like he did at... Uh, at uh, at Valley Forge. Yeah. And the previously, I think it was last year in, in Philadelphia. Yeah. I tell you, you know, he's, he's, he could really he could really nail it on Trump. And he is. He's going to keep nailing it. Well, let's uh, well, let's wait and see what happens, because obviously it's going to be Biden and Trump, right? 
Yeah. And I'm not just going to wait and see. I'm actually going to, to work on his campaign. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Doing what in particular? Well, uh, I've actually already signed up for a uh, for uh, sending postcards to North Carolina. And uh, so text, there's texting, there's phone banking, there's postcarding, oh, you know, good. things like that. Good. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it must make you feel good to do that. Well, it's true. I actually, you know, funny, uh, after the 2016 election, I was with some friends and one of them says, you know, I wish I had done more than just vote. <laughs> and that's well that, that's, a, that's well, that, you know that's state. what i'm glad i can say is i did more than just vote even though we lost yeah. at least it's that i did something you know yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah i'm <laughs> very curious as to uh, what's kind of quickly changing you know one day uh one you know a couple of weeks ago we were in iowa and trump's really killing everything on that day the next time we're in um uh, another state of uh, in in new hampshire i guess and all of a sudden he's competing against this young woman who's got some numbers against him but, she's yeah. got something I mean, they, to they kept saying he won by double digits but that double digit was 11. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know, uh, but you know what? After the after the uh, the numbers and all of that, she still got up there and and told everybody what she thought. Yeah, and that yep. you know, hey, if I were a Republican, if I were a Republican, I'd love her. You know, just buy a nicer dress. I'm curious. <laughs> what was wrong with her dress? <laughs> Wasn't that fancy? They're not fancy, and Trump put them down too. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. He, you know, she she got up there in her fancy dress that that really wasn't that fancy. Yeah. Well, she's well, she's now the bird brain, right? Uh, now she's bird brain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's got a name now. Well, uh, what's going to happen tomorrow for all the Republicans <laughs> who are going to wake up in the morning and realize that uh, Trump has just been ripped off by what? Eighty thousand, eighty three point three billion million dollars. Yeah. Dollars. What are they going to say? Oh. Well, let's. They're going to say, let's send him some money. Yeah. yeah. That's how stupid well, they are because their money that they thought was sending to, they were sending to his campaign, is going to be spent to pay off this eighty three point three million dollars. Is that what they hit him for? Hmm? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I didn't hear that. Yeah. It's serious money. Good for him. But, you know. Good job. Good job. Some of those Republicans are going to have to say, this is not, I'm not voting for this. <laughs> you would think. You, you would think. 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 I, I, just, I don't understand. It's some kind of mojo, some kind of uh, hypnotism that he's using or <laughs> something. Because it, no, there's no, no other. No, it's just plain moronic stupidity. Yeah. Well, I never, you know, I never underestimated the intelligence of the American public, okay? But I didn't think it was it went this stupid, you know? So, yeah, well. You know, so, anyway. Well, we you know, um, but, uh, it, 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 uh, oh, listen, yesterday, um, when are we going to do away with the death penalty completely in this country? You know? I mean... This thing yesterday was, I told Marjorie, stupidest thing ever. I mentioned this last night. They were using nitrogen, but what they were doing is they were putting a mask over his face, feeding him mm -hmm. nitrogen, not feeding him oxygen, which is, of course, the thing that keeps you alive, and eventually mm -hmm. it killed him. They would have but, done just as well, and it would be a cheaper process if they just held a pillow over his face yeah. because that's exactly <laughs> what they were doing. Nitrogen's pretty cheap. <laughs> it may be cheap, but, you know, I mean, why go to all the expense of all the equipment and everything? Just put a pillow yeah. over his face. Use pretty a much. Pillow. It took him like pillow. half an hour to die thing. or something. Huh? Well, it took him a long time for him to die. Because yeah. they slowly fed him. They should have just turned yeah. on the valve and turned oh. it up a little bit faster, and he would have just 
going right they out. They could have beat him to get. Would have taken him about a minute and a half if they turned it up. They could have beaten him to death, much easier and faster than yeah, that. It, it's you know mm-hmm. amazing, just amazing. And right. and they said, well, we found a new way to kill somebody. Which, what what you know? I I know I know what you're thinking, <clears throat> Charlie. That's what science is all about, right? <laughs> What's wrong with the firing squad? Right. Well, there's nothing wrong with the firing squad. It's at least painful, you know. Quick. Quick. Yeah. Get him in the right spot. It's instantaneous. Yeah. No, with no suffering. But I mean, this guy was suffering. There's no question about it. You know, and and I I just don't know why we feel we have to put people to death. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not bringing back the person who they killed, for instance. You're not re-appropriating uh, the crime because you've suddenly killed him. The world is not going to be a safer place in which to live because that person is gone. And quite frankly, you want my opinion, I would rather they execute me than keep me in prison for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, so what's the, what, what, you know, you're doing him a favor. I just don't understand the logic of he was wrong for killing somebody. But it's okay for us to kill him. Yeah, this, we, we we're right in killing the old eye for an eye. It, it, yeah, it's eye for eye. It's punishment. Well, I want my tooth. I, don't, I, don't I want my. It, I want my tooth back. I don't think it deters crime. <laughs> oh no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. no. In I fact, do you know this is a, this is a known fact that in states where they have the death penalty and then they go through a death penalty situation like they did last night. <laughs> The murder rate goes up for about yeah. the two weeks afterwards. Now, and they've never been able to explain why, but it's a phenomenon that happens anytime a state puts somebody to death. Um, so it, it doesn't it doesn't solve that, you know. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm happy to live in a state where we don't have the death penalty, and I think we're the better for it, you know. And hell knows we have enough crime in this state that you know you. you we could be killing lots I of like people. Texas. <laughs> you know, they had a picture of the gurney that they were going to use. Mm. And I don't know if this was just a setup or whatever. But it was a picture of the gurney. And you know what was right in back of it? The electric chair. <laughs> hey, if it doesn't work there, we'll just ask you to slide into the chair. Okay? <laughs> you know. Yes. You know, what I, what I never understand is on the, when they used to do the injection... Why do they use sterile needles? <laughs> no, here's a little fact you may not be aware of, Alan. But uh, before yes. they put the needle in your arm, they put alcohol on your arm. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. They probably do. God, they yeah. do. They do. Yeah. God yeah. forbid you yeah. should get an infection. Yeah, right. Yeah, Larry Brown was wondering about that, and they found that he he did the research. He found yeah, they they swabbed the guy's arm, <laughs> put the needle. Oh yeah, in. and they always use brand new needles. I mean, what the hell? You know? yeah. Come on, it costs so little, and you know what? It what? would cost more to take them and make them dirty. Well, all I'm saying is is that uh, why why swab them with alcohol? Okay, that's, right. that's idiotic. <laughs> yeah. Know? Do it's, no like, it's like it's like putting polish on a bullet that you're going to shoot the person with. I mean, that's, <laughs> or sterilizing the bullet. Or sterilizing it, even yeah. yeah. Or sterilizing <laughs> the bullet. Give me. Sh- yeah, but I mean that that was uh you know that that story yesterday just I, I've always been very much against the death penalty, and every time these things go on, I get very bothered by them. You know, they really mm-hmm. agitate me. So speaking of punishment, how about the uh, the parents that are getting put uh, responsible for that guy that went out and killed those that those kids? I guess it was. Well, I don't know if I'm exactly against them being on trial. I'm not either. You know, I think that that is. Uh, oh. a, a, a I think it's pretty pretty good actually. Being a parent, yeah, of a teenager, and seeing the way some of these parents are. Bringing their teenagers up, I'm not so. <laughs> well, they again. also, I think, didn't they also go out and buy the kid the gun? Yeah, and they were showing them how to use it, take them to the range. Yeah, and they didn't yeah. take care of him, and they didn't. 
you know, they, they weren't were responsible, responsible parents. and now they go to court. Well, how old was the kid? Who Was he 15, something like that, 16? Yeah, something like that. Something yeah, like that. at that age, <laughs> you don't know right from wrong necessarily. You know, you're, no. you're being taught it constantly, but you don't know right from wrong. And you live in a society where, hell, you turn on TV and there are TV shows about people murdering people. You know, well, what's a kid? Playing video kid? games and everything else. Well, I don't oh, know. Yeah. Do you think video games cause a problem? Yes. No. I don't. Me either. If, I if, in, if playing video games, first-person shooters, okay, which I love, were in fact cause people to commit crimes, uh, then I'd probably be up for the death penalty right now. But, you know, well, I think anybody who plays a video game knows exactly what they're doing. You know, so the, 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 the 15 year old that you but just you're, didn't know what he was doing, correct. he plays a video game and he gets to kill people that looks very realistic. And then he wants, then he goes out and does it. That doesn't, I don't understand. I think kids, even kids, know the difference between a game and real life. Sure. Yeah. So does the, so other, does the 15 year old. But you just contradicted countries. yourself. You just contradicted yourself saying yeah. that. It, in other he, countries like Japan, the, these games are even more popular, and they don't have the shooting because they don't have the access to the guns. Well, right. that, that that's another factor. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and um, it's not the video games. Who contradicted himself? Yeah, well, here? you know, I mean, come on, you know, um, Alex. I, I don't know. How, that, that was my point. How did right. I contradict myself? Well, on one set, on one point, you said that it doesn't. Uh, what was it? You said that it didn't affect the kids playing the games but on the other point you said help me out alan because i can't remember yeah well what, what you said is that 15 or 16 year olds don't you know. know we know you're all getting old when you can't yeah. remember what i that's said that's exactly <laughs> what i'm saying you know that's, that's, i got yeah. off track well, my that, that was kind of my point that you said two different things so and that kevin kevin found the right word contradiction so no and, the parents have to teach the kids right from wrong and raise them to be you know good members of society providing the parents can and providing they know how to be parents a lot of parent a lot of families especially inner city youth have one parent that parent's working to put a roof over their head they don't have time yeah but usually no. that happens to be or the they mother. do and the they don't do it right well that happens Absolutely. in many cases in inner city kids <laughs> happens to be the mother and um, mothers do a fairly good job of raising their kids mm -hmm. you know but they I could think sure for the most use, part, yeah, you're right. They they could sure use a male role so, model. So they did they did a study, and I don't know who did the study, but I read it once, uh, like the 80s or 90s. They said most inner city youth that is not going to school, that's involved in gang life, the first time they'll ever get to see the outside of their neighborhood is on a bus or in a coffin. That's sad. <laughs> But well, probably, going to prison, you but probably true. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these kids from inner city Los Angeles have never seen the beach. And the beach is right there. Well, I find because that kind of hard to believe because you can just get on a bus and go there. No, you no, can't. No, I was just talking through, about... You go through another gang's territory and you can get shot, killed, whacked, whatever you want to call it. It isn't that easy. Gee, will you tell me where those places are so the next time I go to L.A. I don't get killed? Yeah, just, yeah. You, you'll be fine. Nobody knows who Alex Bennett is in L.A. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I, I would stay out of Harlem in New York, though. <laughs> well, it's a little late for that. Yeah, well, mm. you know. everybody loves you in Harlem. You know something? I, 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 was I, trying, I was trying to go to sleep last night. There are just too many sirens in this neighborhood. Yeah, you know? But, Marjorie says, because we live on the intersection of 116th and 7th Avenue. And I went, that has nothing to do with it. There's too much crime going on or something or fires or whatever. But, I mean, it, it's just amazing how many, uh, how many sirens I hear in this neighborhood. Be lucky you don't live in a high-crime neighborhood. It isn't necessarily a high-crime neighborhood no, That's what I'm saying. It's not the Bronx. You know, it used to be, but not used anymore. Yeah, it used to be, you know, uh, but I mean, I mean, in fact, the neighborhoods uh, gentrified a, a great deal, right. you know. So I have no place to buy my crack anymore. <laughs> uh, that's 
Just a joke, folks. I have no place to buy my Coke any longer. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Clear mm -hmm. that up. I don't know. Most 7-Elevens, all the, you know, Costco, you can get Coca-Cola everywhere. That's what you're talking about, right? Very, very good. Very good. No, I was just, I, I was bringing that up because I, you know, just this last week or so, I, I've run into a couple of issues in parking lots and, you know, <clears throat> me doing this DoorDash thing, I was sitting in a parking lot the other night and I just... <laughs> You know, I told my wife the other day, and I started to sound like an old yeah, every man. Every time I hear DoorDash, can I <laughs> just I, say this before you go on? Every time I hear the term DoorDash, I think people are talking about jeans. Oh, it's sure. DoorDash. Yeah. DoorDash. DoorDash, okay. Yeah, anyway. Little, anyway. Spelled we, differently. Anyway. <laughs> that, was a, that was an Allen joke. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, oh, you get, I was in the parking lot just the other day, and I and I see this family pull up in a PT cruiser and he's got the boom box going and he's got his middle a middle girl a girl probably in a middle school girl and it's got uh, another kid in there a little bit younger and he's got the the car turned up full blast and it's got the boom boom motherfucker nigga this bum boom shit going full blast and the kids are standing there and he gets out and he's walking around his car and he's moving this and stuff from this this car to that car and, and these kids are standing there and he's got his remote control and the, there's six other kids on bicycles over there going hey man that's pretty badass and he turns it up louder and you know with his mark and, and I'm, I'm going and the you know the shit that's coming out of this car is you know i want to you know do your mama and all this other shit coming out of the car and the kids are getting back in the car and they drive off and that was the first one I heard. And then the other one, I'm sitting over there waiting for a pizza thing. And and there's three kids in a car. And the car is running. And the dad's in there getting a pizza. And and this music is going. And it's got, you know, all this motherfucking bullshit, motherfucking shit. You know, I'm going to kick you in the ass. I'm going to, you know, suck your dick and all that other mm. shit coming out of the car and they're turning it up while they're sitting in there in the car <laughs> and i go in and and dad's there waiting for the pizza and he's all tatted up and shit and, and i'm going are you kidding me this is you know this is dad and these are the kids out there and i felt like you know i was about 80 years old mm. first of all thinking that you know I mean, at least when we were kids, the music that we used to listen to was I Love You and all that bullshit. Yeah. But nowadays, the, the shit that's coming out of these cars nowadays, and I'm going, do these, do these parents go to the PTA meetings and everything else like that too? <laughs> I mean, I, I used to go to some of these meetings and see these people show up, and I'm going, okay, which kids are yours? Because <laughs> you know, I don't want my kid anywhere near them. But, you know, and that's that's kind of like, what we're talking about with this 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 family that's going to mm. jail for their kid that shot somebody i mean what the hell i mean these parents are not raising they're not raising their kids the right way nowadays well you see nobody said uh, uh, nobody they didn't, here's what they didn't do on the on the uh, condom packages they don't have instructions on how to be a parent <laughs> well, no, no that's obvious and and, and that's the problem it, most people don't know how to be parents anymore. I mean, you know, and here I'm stereotyping these guys because the guy's got tattoos or whatever, you know, and then I tie him to that car out there and the kids are in there with their hoods on and their music blaring away and the car's running. And then, then I run into this other guy in the PT cruiser in the parking lot and they're, they're all, and I'm going, what the hell's going on around I, here? I, I got to stop I don't, delivering pizzas. Well, I don't yeah, want to be, right? I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't, nothing to do with it. I don't want to sound like an old fuddy duddy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I did. But when I was a boy, <laughs> you didn't even say four letter words in public. No. You know, like, and today people go down the street with the boom boxes or their stereo in their car full blast with some guy doing a song that's called fuck, 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 fuck. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to beat I'm your thinking, ass and don't you. Know, yeah, exactly. Poke and, you in the ass and everything else. Well, no, but the thing that bothers me about it is suppose there's some older elderly lady going by. At least put your goddamn earphones on so nobody has me. to hear your music. I don't, they don't have this problem in Texas. In Texas, everybody's got a gun. Your music's too loud. Boom. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, the I thing know. is, it's just, th- it's just it, it's just made me think <clears throat> about, you know, things like that. And then you see something, the parents are in, in, you know, in court getting their ass whooped for their kids. Well, shooting they, somebody. They and they go, be, oh, well, that's surprising. Not at all. Your, your job <laughs> you is know? to be a parent. Your job is to be a parent for 18 years. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. that's just like having a pet. You know, you fucking take the responsibility for 18 years, too. But what is that responsible? Well, people, How did you change your who, diaper when they were younger? Some, did people, you? some people aren't responsible with their pets. It's ridiculous. Uh, you know. Uh, I'm, but, I mean, it, it's... Uh, <clears throat> it, it, I just think that, to begin with, I don't understand why these guys drive by... Okay, I'm, I'm so, sorry, I won't do it. I'm sounding like an old fart. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. But I don't understand why people think they can drive by on a street with their radio blasting i don't want to hear your music but i don't play that no but i don't i don't want to hear your music close your goddamn windows okay oh you can hear them even if the windows are closed (laughs) no then you just hear the the car is kind of vibrating yeah the whole idea is to get the license plate to vibrate all the license plate vibrates yeah Yeah. Yeah, the license plate vibrates that's the whole thing that's their thing is to get the license oh god well welcome to the old fart program here folks yeah we don't understand that wasn't really my point my point was really just the you know the i don't you know i'm an old fuddy duddy i don't understand (laughs) why okay uh, and I've said this before, uh, and I'm not putting you down because you have your mic where it is, Kevin, so I'll uh, leave it up to you that way. But why mm-hmm. all these people doing podcasts feel they have to show their microphones? <laughs> oh, now you've been thrown under the Ooh. bus, Kevin. Well, well, I know. And look, look, <laughs> I could I do care. it. I could do it. Wait a minute. Where there? See my I microphone? Okay. But I keep it down here. I don't want anybody to see that I'm using a microphone. All right. So wow. you know, or get get a lavalier, or something like that. You know. But no, we've got to have these big microphones with all the the the, the big arm on it with the name Rode on it, and uh, you know. And I'm going. Don't you know that for years in broadcasting we've done everything we could to hide the microphones? Yeah. You know. I mean, I got too much shit on my desk. That's the problem. Well, you know, yeah, and then for you it's convenient, and for me it's convenient too. But I have it on an arm here that when I'm through doing the show, I just can move the mic out of the way. You know, so it's no big deal. But anyway, let's see. It's the old fuddy duddy hour, folks, uh, in which we talk about f- things that uh, you know appeal to fuddy duddies. And, uh, Bitch and wine hour. Huh? Bitch and wine hour. Bitch and w- <laughs> wine hour. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch and wine and cheese hour, yes. All right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> well, uh, we're coming up on. I got about thirty seconds left before I have to play the music. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's it. Oh, quickly, Taylor Swift is suing over AI nudes of herself, and I'm wondering yep. who are these people who want to see her naked? <laughs> I find her largely unattractive. Taylor Swift. Yeah. She's too Damn. tall for me. She's almost six feet tall, this woman. Yeah. I love Amazons myself. It's okay. <laughs> Do you love Amazons? Oh, okay. Are you short? <laughs> no, I'm six. I was six one most of my oh, life. Oh, because short, short guys love tall women. Mm-hmm. When I was going with Kathleen, she used to tell me about guys who just they came up to here on her, and they just were... Oh, perfect height. Yeah. Perfect height. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> exactly. You put a drink on their head. Anyway, hey, listen, we that's the music going on there. Josh, thank you for being here tonight and giving us your wisdom. That's always mm-hmm. nice. Uh, Charlie, good to have you here. Uh, Jeff, mm-hmm. you're getting better and better with finding out how to turn down the audio. Uh, Tommy Amaguchi, gosh, twice in a week, I think this is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I came on. Actually, I was going to come on to tell you that the, the panel wasn't showing on the, on the screen. But by the time I got on, you'd fixed it. So. Oh, you mean I was on the screen, not the. Uh, not the panel, yeah. The panel, but yeah. by the time I got on, it yeah. was fixed. Well, that's what happens when you get old and are a fuddy duddy. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you uh, to uh, Alan. And thank you, of course, to Kevin. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our 
uh, it's our citizen panel. There's going to be another one, you know, right after we're through here. There's a lady by the name of, oh, yeah, Amy Manuel. And Amy uh, does a show uh, called The Intersection. And she's going to be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live, G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. I'll see you again on Monday with the uh, pop-up show. It'll be on over on uh, uh, Facebook. And then we'll be back here uh, next uh, Wednesday with another Ramble. I'm Alex Bennett. And as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.